What is up guys, the Raging Show here, always known as Tyler. As 2017 comes to an end, it has been, as I can say, another great year for gaming. Uh, we had a lot of big hits, a lot of surprises, but with the end of the year we also had a lot of disappointments. So this year, before I do my uh, top 10 list, I decided to probably go ahead and do a top 5 most disappointing games of 2017. These are the five games that disappointed me the most personally. Maybe you liked it, or maybe you liked the game in general, and a lot of other people didn't. I just didn't like it. But this is going to be my own personal list of five games from this year that I was hyped for, and it kind of just disappointed me. So we're going to start off with number five. Middle Earth, Shadow of War. Oh boy, WB thought they had fooled us with this game. Shadow of Mordor was met with exceptional praise when it was released in 2014. Purely for its fun Batman Arkham style combat and the introduction of the Nemesis system. So when Shadow of War was announced earlier this year, well we were all looking forward to it weren't we? Until the bad news started rolling in. Loot boxes would be making their way into this single player game. Oh wait, but it has a online PvP mode with forts so now it's technically a pay to win system uh, regardless to this day of how balanced the system is said by people it is very obvious that this game did not need microtransactions but were forced in anyway by wb because they thought they could get away with it and make a quick buck then you had the free or character dlc which was supposed to be a tribute to a dev who passed away and people had to buy the dlc and some of the portion of the income would go to the family Unless you weren't in the U.S., in which case it would go to WB, even though they tried to tell people that that wouldn't be the case. And then they had to make the DLC free and offered other ways to give money to the family like it should have been in the first place. Then, when the game finally came out, it was met with average reviews. Fun gameplay and even in more depth nemesis system with more features. But, a story that was somehow worse than Mordor's. Repetitive missions. I couldn't even be barred to beat the game myself. I probably got to Act 2 and just couldn't because it was just repetitive. Go to this fort, kill the leader of that fort. Now go to the other fort, do the same thing over and over and over. The game also had its case of lore issues. Now, the game had a case, the, the series of Shadow, or Middle Earth, Shadow of whatever, had its case of lore issues and Mordor, but people overlooked it. But, when it came to... Characters like Shelob the giant spider suddenly becoming a half-naked woman, then that's when people drew the line. Because you know, half-naked women in video games sell well. This game, no doubt, was a disappointment, and also stirred up probably one of the biggest controversies of this year with its loot box system, and other various issues. Number 4 Telltale's The Walking Dead, A New Frontier Telltale's The Walking Dead has been considered a great storytelling game of its time, with the first season back in 2012 met with high appraisal and even going on to win Game of the Year of that year. Season 2 in 2014, while not necessarily a disappointment, definitely didn't live up to its predecessor. The Walking Dead A New Frontier, or Season 3 as I like to call it, is the disappointment of this franchise. The first sign was when Telltale decided that Clementine, the little girl you've watched grow and guide on her journey, would not even be the main playable character. Instead we got Javi, who... What's so great about Javi? Season 3 is met with such an uninteresting story full of forgettable characters, with Clementine stuck in the back seat, very rarely interacting with her or just playing through her short flashbacks. Great idea, Telltale. You know they realized our mistake when at the end of the season, a text saying Clementine's story will continue pops up. This game is the utter definition of your choices don't matter. Because, well, they don't. Number 3 Outlast 2 Outlast 2 had such a high chance of being the best successful horror game in the Outlast series. But it just didn't hold a candle to Outlast 1. While the setting was definitely different from the old insane asylum of the first game, that's about all it has going for it. The villains and the creature that hunt you in the game are almost completely forgettable when compared to the likes of Chris Walker, the twins, and Traegar from the first game. 
The game almost completely ditches the crouch, hide, and solve puzzle and make your way to the next area without getting kill technique, and instead prefers you to deal with continuous scripted chase sequences every 10 minutes, while also having the system of trial and error by continuously dying until you find a tiny hole in the wall that the game wants you to go through. They try and give more character to the main protagonist and even his wife, but they are just so boring and average you don't even remember their names or caring at all about them. The ending is almost as insulting, if not even more insulting, than the first game's ending. I hope that if they ever decide to do an Outlast 3, they learn from the mistakes of 2, and try and build upon this very potential horror game series. Number 2 For Honor this game had so much potential, and Ubisoft pulled a Ubisoft. With continuous server issues, like most Ubisoft games, a add-on campaign that I called from the start that was just a tack on to try and justify the 60 bucks that you completely forget about and almost just basically serves as a tutorial more than an actual story. Balancing issues with players able to just completely annihilate other players depending on the gear they have or the cheap tactics they use to win. <clears throat> shove, hit, shove, hit, shove, hit. It is such a sad image that this game looks the part of having just the potential to be this great outstanding game. And then Ubisoft just like not even being able to comprehend how to actually work with the game. Like I said, balancing issues, forgettable story, content that, while appreciated, is kind of somewhat pointless, such as the gear system, which just makes the game completely unbalanced and unfair to newcomers and players in general. I wanted to love this game so much. I continuously try and go back to it every few months to play it, but I just can't bring myself to play it longer than a day because of, like I said, the balancing issues, the continuous server errors, they're just now getting dedicated servers on the game. Why was this not a thing at launch? Uh, it's It really is painful to watch how this game, which it's incredibly fun. I'm not going to lie. It is a really fun game. I love the whole aspect, the Vikings versus Samurai versus Knights aspect. And the combat itself is challenging and fun and easy to learn, though. But god damn it, Ubisoft, you had to... Fuck it up. And my most disappointing game of 2017 is EA Star Wars Battlefront 2. Oh boy, where do we start with this one? Alright, just for those you don't know, because I did a similar video on a beta of the original EA Star Wars Battlefront back in 2015. Can I give my thoughts? I even included it in my disappointing category of my top 10 games of 2015. But just a brief history. I love the original Battlefront games. 1 and 2 are some of my favorite games of all times. And just my top Star Wars, favorite Star Wars games of all time. So you can imagine how disappointed I was when DICE got hold of it back in like 2015. And managed to completely ruin it and re release a half finished game of a mess. So when Battlefront 2 was announced, or EA's Battlefront 2, sorry... I honestly kind of had hope for it. They were including space battles, a campaign, we were getting the prequels and the current trilogy uh, of like the First Order and the Resistance and all that. So there was so much potential. There was like, there was like a lot of content coming and, uh, you know, free DLC announced and no season pass. It was like, holy crap, is EA really doing this? This is outstanding. And then you get into the beta, and oh my gosh, there are loot boxes. And it is essentially paid to win. There was so much controversy, and still is to this day, about this game. So much that governments and like countries and everything are trying to crack down on loot boxes now, and trying to say they're gambling, because EA tried to selfishly make some money off of this stupid microtransaction system. And completely ruined a potential game because I've seen I've seen the game. I played the beta. It is a fun game. I prefer the uh, space battles more than anything. It's funny because that looks like it'll be my favorite part of the game. And Dice didn't even develop that part. <laughs> but I I refuse to outright get the game because of this stupid system. And then it turns out the story is disappointing, coming in at like four to six hours and not even adding anything to the actual Star Wars world. 
It is such a shame. They had the potential. Everything was looking so good. And then you kind of get in between the cracks and you open it up and you see all the disgusting stuff in it. And you're like, wow, this game is just wow. Great job, EA. You had so much potential, but your greediness got the better of you and you ruined a potential rescue of the series. There's so much more I can go into depth about why this game was just such a disappointment, but there are already countless videos on YouTube and the internet in general about why this game was such a disappointment, and is a prime example of what happens when you get too greedy. So, EA Star Wars Battlefront 2 is my number one disappointing game of this year, because unlike the first Battlefront from 2015, I was actually very much looking forward to this one. I actually thought EA and DICE could have learned from their mistakes and had, you know, have taken the advice from everyone who bashed the first game and were actually, you know, doing something with it. And instead, they were so close and, like I said, they got greedy. So, there it is. Way to go, yeah, yeah, done fucked it up. And there you have it, guys, my top five disappointing games of 2017. Let me know where were some games that you were looking forward to this year and kind of let you down, and I'll be sure to take a look at it and kind of probably talk to you in the comments about it. But thank you for watching. Be on the lookout for my top 15 games of 2017. 15, yes. Adding an extra five this year because there were so many great games. Like I said, keep a lookout for that probably in the next few days after this video goes up. But earn that. Again, thank you for watching and peace.